My name is Hans Christian Kolbeck, and um, on behalf of my co-authors, the steering board of the pregnant study, I'm, uh, I'm presenting our abstract regarding um, patients with metastatic HER2 positive breast cancer, and we are comparing the benefit from standard HER2, HER2 uh, directed therapies for patients initially HER2 positive um, uh, uh, with patients initially HER2 negative switched to HER2, HER2 positive during the course of the disease. Um, the pregnant registry is a large national breast cancer registry um, uh, collect, pr prospectively collecting data for metastatic breast cancer patients and at the time of the analysis, over 4,000 patients were in the registry. The pregnant study is focusing on translational and biological analysis. Um, in meta-analysis, we have seen that five, almost to 9% of patients are switching from HER2 negative to HER2 positive during the course of, um, of breast cancer treatments. These patients are obviously during their metastatic, in the metastatic setting, treated like HER2 positive breast cancer patients, and not as a distinct entity, but um, with standard HER2 um, directed approaches. So in this analysis, we compare we, we, we uh, compared the benefit derived from those HER2 um, uh, positive HER2, HER2 directed therapies for these patients. From those 4,000 patients, almost um, only 59 um, qualified for this analysis. Uh, 49 qualified this for this analysis, and the main reason for that was that we. Um, in many patients did not have the HER2 status um, for the primary disease before patients were metastatic. Um, we had a four year observation and during this time, the median observation time was nine months. And um, we, had, um, uh, we calculated PFS, um, progression free survival and overall survival um, and adjusted the results for age and hormone receptor status. Um, almost 88% uh, of the patients were hormone receptor positive. And to summarize the, re the results briefly, um, if you look at the uh, uh, adjusted model, um, adjusted for age and, um, uh, and hormone receptor status, um, we saw a difference um, in uh, PFS. The hazard ratio was 0 0.49. That was almost, almost significant with a P of 0 0.06. Um, I guess because uh, of the small uh, sample size. Uh, the event number in the overall survival um, analysis was too small for an adjusted model, so we only calculated the unadjusted model. Here we saw the same hazard ratio as for PFS in the adjusted model of, of uh, 0 0.49, and uh, we saw a hazard ratio regarding, um, uh, uh, regarding um, uh, PFS um, from, of 0 0.59 in all cases um, uh, with a benefit from her to direct therapies for patients initially her to positive. So the her, her initially her to negative patients were faring um, a lot worse. Uh, and um, if you look at the survival and PFS rates um, uh, at one and two years, we see um, uh, we see a PFS has a ratio for the PFS you no know, a percentage of PFS at one year of uh, twenty six percent compared uh, for the HER2 negative switched to HER2 positive patients compared to fifty two percent of the initially HER2 positive patients and if you look at two years it's nineteen percent versus forty four percent this is this not exactly the same but the Numbers are also a trend in overall survival um, and the median survival, a uh, progression free survival for her to negative patients, which her to no positive was um, 7.8 months and 10 months for patients initially her to positive. So, um, to summarize, uh, we did not see any significant differences, but that is due to the small sample size. We saw a strong trend um, that patients with initially her to negative breast cancer switched to her to no positive have a worse prognosis and uh, worse benefit, less benefit from uh, um, standard HER2 approaches. Of course, this justifies, this is a retrospective analysis with a small sample size. It doesn't justify any clinical consequences right now, but it definitely justifies including patients initially HER2 negative, switch to HER2 positive in prospective clinical studies as a distinct entity. And um, the second thing that we are proud of from the registry, from the pregnant registry, is that recruiting patients into registries allows us to look at these small, very small questions in detail and come up with hypothesis generating results.